So this is the RF Bay plugin module in all of its glory. And look at just everything is designed in individual cases that is screwed to a bottom base plate and connected with quarks and everything here, feed through capacitors. Oh man, I love it. This is just how you design really, really good stuff. And the output attenuator is really what makes this worth worth reusing because you can't really use a 300 watts uh, generator that can only do 100 megahertz. So it's it's really, I think this is the thing that I would kind of reuse if this was going to be pulled to pieces. But I don't know yet, yet what is going to happen with this one. And look at that, you can access the bottom side of the PCB for service. They've thought about everything. I have seen a million products where you have to disassemble everything if you want to solder on something here and it's so annoying. But this is just fantastic. I'm a little bit worried about what is inside those modules because you see 6.3 volts. Hmm. That is normally the filament voltage for tubes. So it's running off minus 6.3 and 20 and then 75. Ew. I don't understand why this is 935. This is just a number. Just to say. Where is it going? See, and this one is loose. And they're using those really, really cool. I think this is a mini version of SMC or something. Yeah, it is this uh, screw on SMC. Really cool. So this one was loose. Different colors for that is. Oh, so you know what you're doing. Oh, this is also loose. See? That is not so good. I really would like to see what is inside those boxes. Don't you? Now we are inside. It is actually possible just to take out um, the screws here and all the screws around this uh, plastic part and then bend it a little bit so this piece of aluminium can go out this way it is possible to access all the shielded modules and they are mounted from the back see there's a power resistor here is this for heating it up for stability or is it just because they need a really high power drop for something i don't understand what that is doing well well Ooh. this is just the first one we're into and it is really really nicely made look at that is that a capacitor or something look at the plastic that holds it up isn't that cute hmm I found something that is a little bit fun fun to see here So those two connectors, they were obviously placed on the metal and the, all the framing and all the, the mechanical design. So they were supposed to be exactly like that. And then the PCB layouter was doing the layout here. and <laughs> So he had to cross these two instead of just 
swapping this. So that is what happens when you have too many people working on the design, right? So if this would have been the same guy, he would have said, hey, I just swapped these two, choop, choop. and then you don't need all this swapping around in the PCB. So you're actually crossing two lines like this. Look at that. Well, this is not really, really what you want to do, right? <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's a really beautiful layout. Especially when you think about oh, this is done before computers. Let's open a few more and see what else they contain of cool things. I forgot to show this in the first unit. This one is mounted on the very top. Look at those two. They can actually be pulled out. See? And this will access the two trimmers. The trim capacitor and the trimmer resistor. All right. So you can adjust something in this unit without pulling anything apart. So now I've taken out the second unit. I always write my little secret notes so I can see where I've been and how to assemble stuff. So the next one here. Look at this end metal. And this is because you want good grounding to the yeah, to the chassis here. And those are actually really heavy casted. Look at the thickness. And then it, okay, it goes down to smaller thickness, but this is really really stable. Uh, actually a really nice sexy case for something if you want to reuse one of these and even the, the plates here it's really easy to mount another PCB in here so that is some really really weird ICs Motorola Motorola parts what are they doing so And what kind of voltage are they running on? I, this is probably some Sena diodes and some local regulation because what I see here is 20 volts and minus 6.3. Hmm, what is that doing? Or is it some analog stuff that is doing some divider? So we probably have some counters here, right? Some dividers and counters and whatnot. And this, the 93 and the 96, what is that? Is that just the number that goes to some other wires? I'm trying not to bend too much around with this, so it's easy to assemble it again. So that was the second one. Really nice, a divider. So this is the third unit. Loop amplifier. Look at that. Here's a crystal. And it looks like this is the oscillator and then a custom HP thick film integrated device. If you look up here handwritten numbers on it so that is something fantastic and they didn't even solder all the pads they didn't need just so it's easier to take it out for something 
Well, that's actually half of the ground pads not soldered. And look at this filter. So this is a low pass filter with four PCB inductors. Isn't that just really nice? What is inside this one? Let's have a look. So now we are inside this module. And look at that. This is the 200 megahertz input. And it goes through here and up here. So this part is called CA3019. And that will be a bunch of ultra fast ultra low capacitance um, diodes. So this is obviously a mixer they have done. They have created a mixer here. So they want to remove the 200 megahertz from the output of the of this mixer. And this is why they have this low pass filter. So this will be, of course, a the 200 megahertz stop. So that will be the output from that one. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, that was pretty cool. So this is the fourth unit. It's called Fixed Oscillator. What is on the back? Not much. And I think, yeah, this is the main output. And look how they made this last output filter. So it's not going to the PCB or anything. It's just really, really closed. And then this is actually the input to this filter. There's nothing on the bottom side at all. So I don't think we can open this thing. It's probably not opened from the bottom. And here is also another filler, I guess. Or maybe a mixer or something. Oh, look at that. God. Tracks. That is pretty cool. This is normally something you only see on really, really high impedance stuff and super sensitive stuff what is this looking like a little bit of hair or dust that is strange what is that oh, oh look at that that is odd why would you have this Sticky, sticky here. Maybe they try to clean this with a cotton pen, and half of it got stuck there. It looks like cleaning. Yeah, look at that. And again here, they've been cleaning. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Maybe we could unscrew this and have a look. I think this design looks a little bit like the previous box. Also, we got a crystal here. What is that? Oh, I can't make up the frequency on that one. Yep, exactly. Good guess. This is the same diode I see. So they're using this one for mixer. So this is probably a ring mixer and balanced input outputs, just like you need to do when you're making a balanced mixer. All right, and then of course the filter now, it makes a lot of sense. So I guess they're mixing two different signals together and this is why they're able to generate a signal that is zero to 110. So of course they do this by beating up the two frequencies Otherwise you can't go from zero 
So this is a really, really intelligent design. So this is the last, number five, voltage tuned oscillator. And again, very impressive voltage, minus 75 and plus 20 and minus 6.3. So this is the tuning voltage, very good. This is shielded and uh, three buffered outputs. Um, this text was a little bit uh, confusing. Rear panel, this is of course only this one. The other two outputs, they go somewhere else. Uh, like shown uh, in the previous in the video so let's have a look at this really cool voltage controlled oscillator look at that one so this capacitor look how thin it is i think it is a ceramic disc capacitor of some sort really really nice and the inductors hand crafted <laughs> to make them work. I think this diode in, in the middle here, maybe this is the capacity diode. But I also see this is the tuning voltage and it goes through some diodes and stuff here as well. So I was a little bit, uh, maybe this is some sort of a voltage selector or range selector. I also found out what this component is. So if you look real carefully, you'll see two more pins. So that's the coil and the center thing is the read relay so this is the glass tube uh, for the switch so those will be read relays we've seen them before in this product so and uh, the two trimmers here that will of course be for the dc input for the for the voltage uh, controlling the the oscillator and uh, those are accessible from the outside i try to take out one of these metal things here and it's actually quite easy to do with a flat screwdriver and see done and it seals really good and of course again this unit was mounted here in this case at the bottom so that means you could access those two uh, trimmers when the whole unit was assembled and you can access uh, from the bottom so this is the output stage. It's not that easy to see the attenuator, but I believe this one is one of the really, really good and fantastic parts, is that one. So I wanna have a look at the part number on it. And also I need to access the RF input and the RF output connectors so I can measure if it works and if it is flat up to three or four gigahertz where I want to use it and if it is that good I'm sorry but then I'm gonna score that part because it is like 20 times more worth compared to what this whole unit is worth so look at that one this is the the attenuator dial and then Click, click. I don't know if we can see this, can we? Can we get some light in here? I don't know if I'm able to show you, you guys this, but there's a switch here that is, see, it is operated by this arm, and this is in the last position of the output. Uh, hello. I'm saying focus use. plus 13 so any anything else that will be the accelerator working on its own but the last will power boost a plus three by that switch and then of course the red knob in the middle that is the variable output it goes all the way through to the back to this pot meter so if i turn it here you can see it's actually moving a little bit so there's a little bit of slip slap here maybe there is also a yes there is there's a switch in the back end of the pot meter so that means if you turn this yes this click click to go into cal um, that means it will turn off the pot meter adjustment and go into a fixed output level 
so that is how it works also I tried to figure out how to to take this piece apart because you can not see any screws or anything here on the outside so maybe the label here is a little piece of metal that is inside this plastic to cover up all the screws because if you look down here everything is kind of screwed I don't know can you see yes now you can see that one down here we got some screws that is and also for this switch oh, by the way only two wires to this switch and look how nice it is of course they wanted to use some really cool looking switches to get this feel and those two I mean, of course they need to be exactly the same right look and feel is everything but how the heck do i take this piece apart this is what i need to figure out maybe it is unscrew everything here and just pull this out together with the plastic but i, I really want to get in here without this plastic so hmm that is a little bit i need to sit and poke around with see this is the RF input, then there is a gain stage here, and remember this gain stage works from 0 to 110 MHz, so I really want to test this gain stage as it is. So there's a detector output, and again, a power splitter that works from 0, so half of the signal or some of the signal must go here to this detector, and this circuit is detecting the output power level again from zero all the way and and the signal from this detector will go back to the uh, the power stages and uh, this way make it flat over the entire frequency range so that is really neat by looking at the trimmers see low frequency set level and the range automatic level control balance so how much this circuit is affecting you can trim and those two uh, that, that is the double transistors so a balanced or matched pair so the, maybe they're making a discrete op amp or something and then i don't know there will be a diode somewhere maybe we'll see a diode down there see so that will be the detection diode making this a DC voltage then it's amplified as a T test point and stuff. Yeah, that's uh, I think how the detection system works for flatness. And this is what you call an exploded view <laughs> underneath the attenuator. This is the power distribution. See how they connected these two pads together to get more wires or make more space for more wires and ground is again chassis so that means they could add some local decoupling capacitors here to chassis on those voltages and again here so that is the back panel i think i am on my way in here see if i can figure out how to get this out very difficult and using my world famous patience and stubbornness and uh, i don't know determination <laughs> i was able to get this sucker out so it is actually possible to bend and twist and mingle this out so now i'm in here and i can access those things i and the, see that was the switch for the plus three db and i think if i unscrew this one i will be able to get the front metal plate off or maybe it's glued in place so how do you change those switches then hmm and again so this is the bnc connector look here is the nut on the back so that means you can present this product with a really really beautiful bnc without the nut right but if you look at the back panel you also find bnc connectors 
But look at that. The screws or the nuts or the, those are like finger nuts. They're on the back where it doesn't really affect look and feel. They just go all the way to present their products really, really well. A little bit difficult. See, this is the frequency trimming. That one prevents this piece of metal to get out. See, it was here. Nasty, nasty trick. But now we can take this off. And now we can access the screws. Ha ha, easy, easy. So th this is really, really a lot of work if you need to service the switches here. Hmm. Not super duper easy. Let's play with the attenuator first. I just made a zero with this one. So of course you will have a little bit of extra loss with all this extra stuff here. I think we can handle that. I put the marker here for a, ooh, that was 300, way too much. Let's go down to 110. So 110 megahertz is right here. So this is the maximum frequency uh, this unit is designed to do. And this is the insertion loss of everything. This is two and a half gigahertz. So there's uh, obviously some resonance inside this attenuator. And it is clearly not one of the nice ones. So this is the low frequency part, which is a little bit uh, sad. I was hoping for one of the better ones. They, they really look exactly the same. All right, so let's dial this down. Oh, so that was 10 dB. Let's take another one. So that was 20. And 30. And 40. Ooh, look at that resonance stuff, huh? Let's go for 50. And 60. See that? So it's 60 dB. There is some capacitance from the different parts inside the attenuator that is coupling over. So that means the signal gets up at higher frequencies. But again, remember, this was only designed for 110 megahertz maximum, and this is the maximum. I'm looking at three gigahertz here. So this is obviously crazy, crazy out of spec. Let's do the same uh, for a much smaller span, uh, 20 kilohertz to 150 megahertz. And now I have zeroed or normalized when the attenuator is in uh, no attenuation, right? So let's go 10 down. Oh, look at that. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. See, see, now it's 70, I think, uh, yeah, I've reached the noise floor of this bandwidth. But that is pretty good, so this attenuator works really, really good, as long as the frequency is not <laughs> too high. Let's try the same with the video amplifier. I'm going to boot this up and see how it works, but first I'm going to show you guys what is inside. Ooh, some fancy thick film modules or some integrated whatever modules. So this is the the measure, the detector output, and I would expect there will be some sort of a coupler or some resistors connected together here. So it is because this one was supposed this amplifier is supposed to go from zero, right? So that means this coupler must be some resistors somehow and this is of course the the main output i have no idea what kind of gain this one is built for so i need to be very careful with my setup here also if you look at the 
inscriptions here. I think you can see minus 6.3 here. And this is the 20 volts. So look at this. Ground and 20 volts. And I did, of course, measure the, the cable harness here and everything here. So it is indeed in this product. This is connected to ground. Also, I was looking at this module. And when I see this feed through for ground, uh, that's a little bit odd, isn't it? So what I think is this amplifier is a reuse from other products. And in those part, uh, other products, they give it minus 6.3 here to give much more output power. But of course, I will only give this zero and plus 20. And then we'll see what happens. I will just reconfigure the cables here and then I will see uh, what it does. Hang on. So what kind of gain have we got in this amplifier? This is actually a little bit difficult to figure out. See, all those attenuators, and then this attenuator, and then my analyzer, all right? So this stupid tracking generator can't make any signals weaker than minus 20 dBm, all right? So minus 20 plus all this, and this one set for zero attenuation, and bada bing bada boom, we got minus 40. Okay, so this is our input signal. And now I will move this input signal to this amplifier. And then I will crank down the output. And then we'll see what happens. So again, the output attenuator is in zero attenuation. And then now the output from the amp goes to the attenuator so I can attenuate it. But what I did is I just powered the damn thing up. And look plus 11 so that means that it was minus 40 the input so that is 51 db gain 51 db gain in this thing all right so if we want to see the curve just crank it down that was 10 that's 20 and here's the curve and this is why they have the detector output so the detector output goes to the detector and the compensation and uh, handle the gains and then flat curve. So this is the curve without the compensation. Oh, this is so much fun. Of course, I just took another power supply and now I'm driving in negative voltage on the ground input because of course it's written here on the PCB minus 6.3 and with minus 6.3 the amp is much more linear in its uh, maximum uh, output power and my uh, p1 db is uh, ooh, 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 three or four db higher so it's uh, capable of giving plus 17 uh, dbm output so that is a nasty trick if you want more power oh, we need to open the attenuator as well and have a look so that was the bracket for the amplifier. That one taken off. And what have we got? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, that is a nice thick. See, what are you doing? So we got four, only four individual. Attenuators. So that would probably be, be like 10, 20, 40 or 20. It's normally they don't make it that much. So it's, what is it? This can do maximum. Ooh, 110. And it can do 10. So we know one is 10, right? So when it goes from 10, and it goes to 20, right? So this is 10 and this is 20. Ooh, -hoo, 40 and 80, right? So this is how it is. So this explains why this is so bad at higher frequencies, because normally we'll see a lot more and they will only be attenuating like 10 or 20 dB each, and then they will be combined binary. Can't we just go in the other end and have a look? where all the good stuff is. So this is the bottom of the attenuator. No springs. 
Ooh, that is some nasty stuff, huh? Look at that. So this is how it's done. Ooh, and this is exactly why it's not so good for higher frequencies. Oh my god, this is... Ooh, did you see the little trimity trim here, huh? So this is how you adjust the impedances and the couplings with a little thingy. Isn't it just fantastic? So that is how it works. There's also a little fantastic thing here on the input. And they're adding a little bit of capacity to the resistors here. Where you can bend those parts for perfect fix. But of course there should be some shielding in between here because and as you saw, this thing does not work at anything over 300 megahertz and at 1 and 2 uh, gigahertz it goes absolutely crazy. And that is because it goes in, into waveguide mode here. They tried a little bit here to fix it a little bit, but it is not good enough and they should have done this the whole way, closing everything much, much better. And if you open... Um, uh, one of the much more better units, it will look completely different from this one.